Um, if you're defined CRM? CRM typically stands for customer relation management or constituent relation management, which really only means that you're writing stuff down about your customer and putting it into a system where you can kind of search it and look it up. And it's amazing how elusive this has been to businesses and organizations for a long time. It happens that uh, nonprofits are particularly good at CRM early on because they get people to give them money in exchange for nothing. So they really have to know a lot of stuff about those people in order to hit them up. So they're, they're really the best marketers in the world. Um, and, I mean, I don't think they're nearly, and have very early on developed CRM systems, many of which you're probably aware of, like Convio or, or uh, uh, Democracy in Action or, or Black Dog. <clears throat> but, uh, so, but really what you're doing is every time there's a transaction with that customer, you're adding it to their profile. Or any time they give you more information, here's something I think we did for Paramount. We we're finding, you know, like what kind of movies someone liked, and uh, you know where their local theaters were, so they could be very targeted messages. What their email was, and the more and more and more, the more information you give, the more, the more you kind of give back to them and find out. You know, we tie it with the Van Voter database, or we tie it with stuff like that, so we know who who should get what get out the vote message, or you know who has a preference for a particular thing. Mobile is an incredible way of helping build seg as a CRM language segmented lists and data that are easily to, easy to present and easy to, to hyper target. Because I think, again, all of us are in the business of exploiting mobile phones because of that hyper targeted thing. You're getting the right message to the right person. Um, and what the other thing is, there's just a list of charts that were like downloaded from our. our uh, our, our platform, but the idea is like it, it, it yields a huge amount of measurement. You can measure everything on an individual basis, on a group basis, on a meta basis, <clears throat> and this is, you know, this is the kind of thing that becomes extremely interesting to any marketer. Um, just going to give you an example, but again, I think the CRO integration, but but being able to take a list from mobile and then put it into your list from. Uh, 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 email, and then your list of direct mail, and then your list of how many people went into your store, and then your list, and begin, begin to really understand the behavior, not just on a meta level of everyone who lives in Rhode Island, but also right down to the actual person, all on a voluntary basis, you know, all this stuff they've asked for. Um, you know, it, this is just a good use case of how, of how she uses uh, uh, this, but every single outlet, she has a lot of them, from TV, her website, email, magazines, is a way for people to come in. And if people, I know, we've sort of went through this before, but people will text in and say, weddings, which is like a, 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 a separate magazine for her. And then people immediately text back their email. Um, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then right away, they can get into segmenting. Like, what do you want? Well, of course, I want information about all of this. But someone might just want jewelry or stationery or something like that. And then that gets you. Um, they're going to get you stuff right away for it. And then do you want do you want to actually send, send us your address to get a catalog sent to you? Imagine how much that's worth to her marketing department to be able to sell the address of someone that said, yes, send me something about flowers in Des Moines, Iowa, to what, I mean, what she can resell that for to um, a florist in Des Moines, Iowa. It's a, it's a most incredibly valued, um, hyper-targeted kind of list that you can get. And then all this goes back into the CRM profile, and blah, 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 blah. But you, know, you, you should get how all of a sudden the magazine, which is this static, old world, dying institution, becomes this thing that brings you into the super highly valued um, uh, 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 database of, uh, of segmented information. And it's just like the World Wildlife Fund. This is the exact same way. Um, you know, in this case, you, you, they, they have a big problem. They have a problem which is, <clears throat> they want to save the planet, but a lot of people are only interested in particular animals, so or, or species or whatever it is. And uh, but once they know who, who likes dolphins, they can send them all the dolphin stuff and raise more money and get more activism. It's the exact same problem Martha Stewart, the World Wildlife Fund, have. Uh, it's great for interactive outdoor, you know that kind of thing. Just to give you a sense of how people use it. This is I just explained well, the first one. It's one of my favorite ones. Credo Mobile. Uh, we projected these back when the guy on the left was president. Uh, 
would project these these MP thought bubbles up on a screen um, at the Apple Store in San Francisco. And people would text in what they wanted, him, what they thought he should say. And but this was really a. Um, by the way, there's a censored. There's a moderation moderating feature to it, tool which became highly relevant during this particular campaign. <clears throat> but. Uh, the, what a great lead gen tool, right? Those people became very, very, very likely to buy Credo Mobile, you know, and because because of that kind of interaction, and you know that that works all over the place. The other one, by the way, was that the California Democratic Party put that huge um, uh, uh, jumbotron right over where Sarah Cohen was speaking, so people would text in and have appear what the questions they really wanted her to ask live, which got a lot of attention. Very smart. And then uh, the other part, which is like a whole other conference, is on like mobile donations and stuff like that. And uh, feel free to ask me about that separately. I'll talk for another hour and a half about it. But that's uh, so that's it. that's sort of the uh, the landscape of sort of mobile TRM and integrated communications. And I was just say one thing, which is I've never met Jeff before, but we looked for a long time for a product we could sell and integrate with us so it was better than Mixer. And what Mixer gives away for free, we could not find one. So we just recommend Mixer. It's <laughs> extremely <laughs> 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 frustrating. So I think that kind of gives a flavor of uh, the, you know, a very kind of uh, topside view of the diversity out there and companies and, and what they're all doing. And I thought maybe we take like a, a, a brief break and then come back in. And um, Mike Weinberg from Public Knowledge is going to kind of moderate. You know, a panel about uh, we saw we said see the possibility and what they're doing, and, and at the next part we want to talk about some of the, the real world limitations that these companies face in trying to uh, deploy this tremendous technology out there. So why don't we take a, like a five minute break and the restroom here across the hallway? They're open and unlocked. All right. Always <laughs> doing business. As Mike mentioned, I'm Mike Weinberg with with Public Knowledge. We are a public interest group that does a lot of communications issues. And I've been spending a lot of time thinking about the text messaging elements before the FCC. Uh, as Mike also said, unfortunately, the, the first panel was great. It was all about sort of what what things mobile empowers, what you can do, all the all the great possibilities that it presents. And this panel is sort of the flip side of that. Uh, all the reasons why the all the things that stand in the way of really bringing mobile to its full potential and fully realizing it. Because right now, there's a lot of great things that, that all these guys are doing and everyone in the mobile community is doing, but as you talk to people in that community, what you will find out is there are a number of roadblocks that they run into that prevent them from doing the things that really would make mobile an amazing platform, um, just like telephones are an amazing platform or, or email is an amazing platform. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the actual, have you guys talk about the actual process of setting up something on text messaging. And what a lot of people don't realize, what I didn't realize before I got involved in this, is there's actually two flavors of text messages. There are regular text messages that you or I would send each other, and then there are the text messages that these guys are talking about, which actually require a different phone number, a short code which is a couple digit number. And getting that number is nowhere near as easy as you might imagine. So I was going to ask Jared to talk just briefly about the process of acquiring a short code, in, in the idealized process of acquiring a short code. Thanks. Uh, okay. I think everybody can hear me, right? Oh, we record it. Oh, for the recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> My phone check. One, two, one, two. So we're winner. Uh, we have uh, some friends from New Star in the room here today. New Star. <laughs> New Star is uh, a partner of ours. They actually do. Um, they have um, U.S. short codes, which I guess you guys manage with the CTIA, right? We manage on behalf of CTIA and the participating carriers, Got it. as well as the people such as yourselves, the Mobile Market Association, uh, and other users of these communication businesses. Great. So we we. Um, to get short codes, which are five or six digit codes, we uh, go to usshortcodes.com and, and we register them for our customers. Um, and Newstar is the, the governing body for that. Um, so short codes are obviously different than long code. You might hear the 
term long code, that's your cell phone number. Um, so if you want to do marketing or if you want to send messages, um, an actual text message, which is an SMTP delivery versus an email to a phone, which is more like an SMTP delivery, um, you need to send a shortcut. So uh, I, I think there's really two significant um, things that happened in America that really brought uh, the understanding of what a shortcut is and how to, how to interact with it to, to really to middle America. Uh, number one, that's this wonderful show called American Idol, uh, which really educated everybody. You text the word vote to a uh, four digit number. Um, four digits actually reserved for, for carriers, so um, businesses can't get four digits. But and the second thing, really, the largest single mobile marketing campaign in history was the Obama campaign, where he announced um, his vice president candidacy of Joe Biden. Um, and that was for about uh, I think 2.3 million people that had signed up to receive that message. So these are some significant events that really educated. Um, what we do at MobileStorm is we help our customers um, either use a, a code on a shared short code, because a lot of cu customers, and I'll, I'll jump into some of the issues here, but a lot of cu customers can't afford um, the cost of a short code. It's, it's $500 a month for a random code, which could be 45625. Um, or a vanity code, which is $1,000 a month, and that might actually spell something. Um, our, one of our clients, MGM Grand Las Vegas, wanted to get 646, well, I don't know what they got, but it stands for MGM Max, and so in their branding, they can, they can have their shortcut, and then in brackets, they can say MGM Max next to it. Um, it's a high cost, so what we do for, for a lot of the smaller businesses is we allow you to use a short code and share that with a bunch of other companies. Now, there's definitely some benefits to that in terms of um, getting to the market quickly, um, being able to launch a mobile campaign rather quickly, um, and also the, the uh, lower cost. But the, the downside is that you're on a code with a bunch of other companies that, and, and from, if you're a larger company, brand protection is really important. You wouldn't want a consumer getting two different types of text messages with the same code, and maybe you, know, you have no control over the, the second message, which comes from it could possibly come from a competitor. We've actually seen, so we have thousands of customers, so we've seen companies that compete use the same code, and there can be some confusion, um, brand confusion with the consumer. All right, so I think the biggest, the, the biggest issues we have right now, and, and I'm going to be the voice of the, of the small business because we do this for a long time, and we hear this for our customers constantly. Um, and I always like to parallel this with the web. And by the way, Newstar, we, you know, you're partners of us, so I don't want to throw you guys under the bus, and I understand there's, there's technical hurdles and things that need to happen, but um, in a perfect world, what we would like to see, what businesses would like to see is a very quick provisioning process. So if you want a short code, and you want your own short code, it could take anywhere between eight to 12 weeks, and we even seem to take 15 weeks just to get a code up and running. Um, it, look at, you look at GoDaddy, you could go, to, go there and get a domain and have a website within a day. Um, it's not the same for mobile, and that's a problem because uh, you, know, you want to start a company, you've got to be thinking at least 12 weeks out before you can do anything. Um, so provisioning is, is, is a key, and then in that entire process, it's really archaic. We have to get approval from every single carrier. There's actually a person at the carrier that tests each short code and the, the service on that short code. So for instance, if the service is a free alert service that gives you sports scores. They have to test the opt-in, the opt-out, all the, the language, make sure it's correct. Um, we've seen a situation where the, the, our, our service didn't work perfectly, and then your, your application goes to the back of the stack, and you're in line with a whole bunch of other people trying to get your short code provisioned. So even though Newstar, when you go to get your short code, you actually get it, you get it quickly, or at least you own it within 48 hours, the, just to provision it takes takes usually 12 weeks, and that's a problem. And the second thing, obviously, is cost. Um, I've heard, and maybe you can help me out on this, but I've heard that the, the reason that the costs are as high as they are is because there's a limited number of, of combinations when you have five digits. Um, anybody a mathematician? How many combinations are there? You take five numbers. Um, but uh, it, it's expensive. I mean, the small business can't afford 500 bucks or $1,000 a month, and so they have to go on a shared short code. The, the, the last straw of this is the, the squeeze that we're getting from carriers. So uh, well, there's been some rumblings of, of not wanting to do shared short codes. If that happens, then and the small businesses can't pay the amount of money to, to do this, then, then how are they going to become old marketers and how are they going to jump into the space? Um, so these are just some, some you know, concerns that we've been fielding for a long time. And um, you know, it, 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 we've lost business because it's taken too long. Um, one of the problems is, in that 12-week period, when you're trying to get your shortcut provision, you're still paying that monthly fee every single month. So, you're, so 
you know, you, you could you could spend thousands of dollars even before you even can become a mall market. So these are these are some serious problems, um, and that are sort of stifling innovation and growth within our industry. And just to follow up on that, and one. Jed to speak briefly. I don't know if this came out clearly or how involved folks in the room are in text messaging, but it's a, it's a two step process. So you first need to acquire your short code, and then once you have done that, you then need to go and individually get it approved by different carriers. So it's not like acquiring a phone number where once you have your number, anybody can call you. It doesn't matter if they're calling you from an ATT phone or a Verizon phone or a regional carrier's phone. It's, it's a much different process with short codes because it is an individual approval process and it's an individual up or down process. So just because you get approved by one carrier doesn't mean you're going to get approved by all carriers. And Jed, I wonder if you, if you could speak to that briefly, uh, especially well, any experiences you've had with, you, I know you've had a number of experiences with that, if you're comfortable talking about them. And then I also have a follow-on question about the Senator for Community Change that you mentioned, but I'll, I'll let you go ahead with the sure. individual approval. Um, I mean, to, to put it sort of in a more global perspective, though, and I think it, it's come up and it's very exciting, and, 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 and the, the availability of short codes um, is, is much more prevalent. There's 5 billion text messages sent a day in the United States. Most of those are not through short codes. But what it means is that it is the preferred method of human beings communicating with each other in the United States. What, what I think what you're bringing up, and like all these, like, like anyone in mobile marketing has had very, very similar problems is uh, what you're bringing up is how is it, it, it's very frustrating that our customers, and we're not SMS companies, we're communications companies, but our custom, customers are having a very hard time using the most prevalent form of communication in the country to communicate. Like it, 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 it is actually, there, it's, it, it would be easier to install a telex than to get that going. And I, I, and I understand, and there's, there's real, and it's not, it's not, it, there, there's real issues that have to be sorted out that are very difficult for the carriers and do stuff between the carriers and the, the, the aggregators. But the, 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 this, the, that's just a problem, right? I mean, that, that the way, the preferred way that human beings in the United States want to communicate is excluded to most small organizations or medium-sized organizations or even some large organizations because of stuff that was put in under good faith for, you know, for reasons that people were, were were doing for all different kinds of reasons, like but I don't I don't actually know the reason why you need. And it's strange I don't know this because I've been doing this for a long time, but I don't know the reason why you need a short code as opposed to a long code to to, to do that. I'm pretty comfortable with it. I think it, 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 it's nice that organizations have this kind of way that identifies themselves as an organization when they're when they're communicating. But I don't even know the history of that. But, I mean, you you probably you probably do. I mean, everyone is using like a news about the. And the, the administration is, is pretty clear in the, 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 there are a lot of things that work very well about it, but that, that, that what you're allowed to do with the short code, and I think everyone here and most, almost everyone I know in the mobile marketing business believes the same thing that, that the carriers believe, that no one should get a message that they didn't ask for, people should opt out clearly, no one should be scammed or ripped, the, the, those kinds of things need, need a place to be enforced. But, that 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 this that something this broad um, has with it this kind of uncertainty about what you're allowed to do with it, and the ab ability to get to get up and running on that form of communication, without going into too much detail. I mean, there, there's lots of different examples of this. Is is something that is a problem that really has to get fixed, or else you know I mean I don't know what the or else is, but the the uh, it, it just seems strange that that that, that should be allowed to or that that should continue going on. But you had a question about CCC. Um, yeah. Well, actually, I, I have, a, have a different question now. I think I think I'll move past that question. But I was wondering if all of you could speak to, because you have to get you to you have to find an aggregator who will connect you with each individual carrier. How you deal with connecting with smaller regional carriers? Are those carriers? Is it harder to get in touch with them? Is it hard to find an aggregator, or do you sort of cut your losses and say we'll get ninety something percent coverage and everyone else? We're sorry. I most of those are handled by so if you there's five major carriers that cover what ninety five percent. Then there's actually something called like bluegrass wireless in Kentucky that is eighty thousand. We're just looking at the list that has eighty thousand subs. There's Guam wireless. The for the most part the aggregators have integrated with those as well. Um, 
the problem with some small, the, the issues that we've seen come up, and this is particular to the kinds of programs we run because we run a lot of public sector programs for safety, for health, that tend to reach underserved populations, are smaller carriers that are geared towards underserved markets, like Cricket, like Metro PCS, and the availability of them to be able to receive standard rate messaging that people don't have to pay for, when very often that's the closest that person has access to the internet, is being able to text in over a, uh, a, a Metro PCS phone. And, and so, you know, a, a program with public schools in, 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 in Oakland, I'd never even heard of Metro PCS when we did that. 30 or 40 percent of the parents in the school couldn't get messaging between parents and teachers. Um, you know, that was designed to that was designed to circumvent the idea that they didn't have, they definitely didn't have internet access. So, but I, I don't think there's a lot of scope that the aggregators reach, and I don't think not, in, I don't think the aggregators are the people saying we don't want to integrate with Metro PCS. That's what it was my understanding, that's not really true. Can you talk a little bit about the role of the aggregator, in case people are familiar with the term aggregator? Um, yes, yeah, so the, the, there's lots of companies like ours that want to deliver messages through carriers to customers. The way, the way the, the way for, I don't know the exact history of the business, but the way that was set up was that rather than everyone integrating with each carrier all the time, which would be, there's like 150 carriers in the United States, including, I, I love the name Bluegrass, I wish I had a Bluegrass wireless one, but the, uh, <laughs> but the including Bluegrass wireless and Guam Cellular, is, uh, uh, so the, these sort of, these companies that I think started by doing like, a, before there was interoperability in 2002. Remember, before 2002, you couldn't send a text message from a smartphone <coughs> to a Verizon phone. So that, 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 in addition to all this other stuff, I think that was one of the things that really changed the business, which, you know, CTI took it on as a huge initiative of theirs, and uh, may have been the year wrong, but, you know, somewhere around there. Um, 2003. The, the, uh, and I, I think that's really, that was the fuel that, I mean, that was the, the technological hurdle. So the, the aggregators, sort of stand, are the middle way, I, I, this is not how they would describe themselves, and I'm not doing your job, but they're kind of like the middle where between connectivity, they, 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 they host your short code, and they manage the connectivity. So when I send a text message through my platform from, say, NARAL, NARAL, it goes, it goes through our platform to an aggregator. That aggregator then sends it to the carrier. And then that carrier then sends it to that particular customer. And there's a kind of reporting process every step of the way. And then when the person responds back, the the the, the customer to the like, you know, the, the headquarters at AT&T, and then AT&T to uh, Sidebase 365, which is uh, one of one of our aggregators, and then back into our platform. And then they the, well, the most of the reporting we get actually comes from the aggregator, and then uh, we pay we pay the aggregator. The aggregator has the business relationship with them. Yeah, they, they tend to the aggregator tends to manage the relationship between the carrier directly. So the content provider really doesn't deal very much directly with the carrier. Most of those communications, whatever they may be, including regular audits and things like that, come through the aggregator. The aggregator speaks on behalf of the carrier for the content. In fact, in the, in the carrier contracts, I mean, it's not the secret, in the carrier contracts with the aggregators, they're, they're not allowed to put us in touch with carriers, which makes sense because there's thousands of us and there's usually like a couple people at the carriers managing the relationship. So the, the front line of all the stuff we're talking about is between us and the aggregators, I think, for all, all, for all of us, the, uh, not really with us and the carriers. So, so, something that happened recently at an aggregator, um, and this is another concern that that we, the uh, MICC has, a um, company by the name of Clickitel, which is an aggregator themselves. In some ways, they have connections with certain carriers, but they also um, have an, another aggregator that they go through for a majority of their messaging. Um, there was a complaint a consumer made on Sprint, and instead of speaking with Clickitel, um, working that complaint out, you know, finding out you know, what's going on, the aggregator actually shut down all traffic on all short codes for almost two weeks, um, and yeah, that's a devastating blow. I mean, uh, it, it, it's 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 all it, it, it's happened to us on, on one code. Um, 
not across all codes. And I, I think that you know one of the reasons that, that we joined, I should say, we found in the MICC with the form of a mixer is, is so that things like this can't happen. Especially when you're, you know, we're we're a small business. We're growing right now. We're we're creating jobs. Um, it's amazing how many resumes we get on a daily basis now, um, being in Los Angeles and being one of the only companies that do what we do. But it, you know, it, it's it's a serious risk that that you know an aggregator can just go ahead and shut all your traffic off for two weeks. I know they've lost a lot of business. I know that companies came to us and we got business. Um, of course, I'm going to take it. I'm an opportunist, but um, you know, I, 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 clearly we we even asked them to join because we think that you know these are these are serious issues. Um, and you know, we, there should be more communication between the application developers, i.e., us, and, and the carriers. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's what, what, one of the great things that can come out of this is, in addition to the kind of like day-to-day -day business problems that we have, um, that you know, of which we could just everyone has business problems, but like they get shut down right away. There's no certainty. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it affects your valuation. How do you sell a company? How do you build a company and sell a company? When the buyer's like, well, can I just get shut down for no reason at any time, or not no reason, but you know, reasons that are hard to understand. But the other thing it is, and I think everyone, carriers, the aggregators, everyone has an interest in growing this. It's the innovation we can't see, the ability to try stuff and experiment with stuff, along you know, clear principles, things that that that, that, that tying in voice and text and mobile web, the way people use it, you know, actually. We, we, Creative innovation, a lot of it will fail, some of it will succeed. As long as they, they go along some principles that 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 is, you know, what's been so great about the internet. And I'll, you know, just run the ecosystem very, very rapidly. And that's, you know, to, to us, that's I think to everyone, that's you know an enormously frustrating thing is the stuff we don't try. And again, it really is